Hi, Polyphonic. Uh, this is Jade Simmons back for another week and uh, yes, <laughs> with yet another hairstyle. Um, I want to talk to you this week about the importance of continually creating content. I want you to become a content creating monster. Now, this is one of my new soapboxes because I'm constantly running into emerging artists who say they want to be found, they want to be heard, they want to be seen, they want to be read, uh, they want more exposure, but then when people come looking for them, there's nothing uh, to be found because they haven't been creating content or they've been focusing on the uh, you know, things like marketing or social media. But again, when you come really looking for them, they don't have anything to show to speak for their art. Um, one of the most astounding examples uh, that still just blows my mind. Some of you know I was the webcast host for the Clyburn International uh, Piano Competition a few years back. And here you have gathered uh, in one forum 32 of literally uh, what could be qualified as some of the world's best uh, young pianist and 32 of them are there competing but of course there's only going to be one gold medalist and, and a few other finalists uh, so they're not all going to win so they're going to have to make the best use possible of being at the Clyburn and the exposure that that brings and even though there were 32 eager young pianists they're all saying they wanted to be uh, the next big thing in the world of, of classical piano only about 10 of those 32 even had websites. And of those websites, uh, maybe about five of them were worth going to and actually had valuable content that could get me excited about these artists. And that's a shame because it's a lost opportunity. Um, even established artists who say they are concerned about how they want to break out more or get more exposure, when you look closely, they haven't been maintaining their content or they don't have any new content or they don't have any relevant content that can really relate to today's audience. So I want to encourage you to get to work. Um, like I said, so many artists don't have websites or they don't have blogs. And the reason they give me um, is either one, that their stuff is not ready or it's not good enough. Or two, they think that they don't have enough stuff. So to number one, I say, remember that we are our own worst critics and perfectionism can often get in the way of really valuable creating, uh, the creating process. So if you're a painter or a writer, try setting aside a little bit of time each day just to create without judgment. Just write or just paint, or just create music. Surprisingly enough, something always comes from that process. Either you learn more about how you create, or you surprise yourself and discover that you can create in more ways than you thought. And it's not a bad thing to discover that you have a certain weakness that you need to focus on. Secondly, like I said, people say they don't have enough stuff. And that answer is easy. Just make more stuff. Set deadlines for yourself and those deadlines will change your intensity level and they cause you to focus on creating at your best when you know people are going to see it. So set a deadline that I am going to produce my own exhibit by December 12th and you have, you know, three or four months to prepare for that. That will change your focus instead of having kind of a nebulous uh, future deadline of one day I want to put on an art exhibit. There's actually a third reason that uh, people don't create content or don't continue to create content. And I have to say that sometimes I fall prey to the same kind of thinking, which is you start to believe um, that nobody's really reading anyway. Why am I worrying about posting new blogs when, you know, the only blog, the last blog only had, you know, 100 people reading it? Why am I creating more? Well, you're creating more because if you're working like you say, you're working. And if you really believe in the potential of your career, you believe that people are eventually going to be watching. They're eventually going to be reading your blog or listening to your music. And when they come looking for you, you want them to have something. Uh, there's a really hot young rapper that's out right now, and she got famous on one song. And that song took off. It blew up. All the blogs are writing about it. She's on the cover of so many different um, magazines and she realized I can't just survive on this one song as awesome as it is or I'll be a one hit wonder. So she just went to work and every other month she was just rolling out 
all this new music so that you could really feast on her new content, get to know who she really was, um, and start to fall in love with what she was creating. And she also created a sense of anticipation. So people started uh, to look forward to whatever she was going to bring out next. So she didn't let the fact uh, that she only had one piece stop her. She decided to create more content. Now, when I ask you to just create or just write without judgment, I'm not asking you to create irresponsibly. I'm not asking you to make subpar art. Just saying that um, don't procrastinate under the guise or the facade of saying my art's not ready or it's not worthy yet. That's usually an excuse because if it's truly not ready, you'll know that, you'll own that, and you'll work on your weaknesses. But before you accept your own hypercritical judgment, take this test. Show your work, then sit back and see how people you don't know respond to your art. Is it affecting them in any way? Maybe even a way you didn't expect. Maybe it's negatively affecting them, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It means that your art has an effect. And if so, that means that your art has something to say. And you should probably get to saying it. So go out, create more content. I'm going to take my own challenge, set a few deadlines. And I'm looking forward to seeing what I can come up with. I hope you feel the same about your own work. All right, see you next time.